Are you someone who struggles to manage your time effectively? Are you someone who wishes there was more time in the day to accomplish what you need to do? If this is a category in which you fall into, remember, you're not alone. According to research from Development Academy, it found that 82% of people and executives don't use a proper time management system. The Academy's research found that no longer is a simple to-do list good enough to get the job done simply because of its lack of complexity and firm action steps in order to get the job done. Still, 33% of people still admit that they use a to-do list as their primary form of time management at work. Jay Eichner is the founder and CEO of the software testing company JDAQA with a mission of helping business owners and entrepreneurs solve their QA problems once and for all so that they can focus on building what they classify as cool stuff. They have a qualified and skilled, diverse team of engineers that can deploy fast to solve whatever problem ails your business so that you can get back to doing the fun stuff. And Agner, join me this week to tell me more. I'm Kevin McShane. Let's have this conversation. take a moment to welcome you uh, to the program and I'm super excited to talk to you all about a small business this morning. Great uh, uh, to see you and happy Tuesday to you, my friend. Happy Tuesday and thank you for having me. Absolutely. Now, Jay, I know that you are the CEO of your own software testing company and you're a father of five and a student pilot, my friend. And you dabble in photography. It sounds like you have a fully active and uh, a vibrant life, my friend. So I'm wondering if you could just tell me a little bit about who you are, where you come from, and what makes you so fabulous. Well, thank you. Uh, I feel more fabulous after that introduction. Um, yeah, father of five. Uh, six on the way, uh, by the way. So uh, we just... Congratulations. Just, uh, thank you. Um, uh, my wife makes the, the world go around. Uh, she handles, you know, a lot of the kids stuff and dealing with the family, uh, scheduling and, uh, I run the business. So, uh, I did software testing for about 10 years, 15 years in the industry, spun up my own consultancy. Um, couldn't say no to money and started to pull in friends of mine to help, you know, cover some contracts, uh, that, you know, I couldn't, couldn't get done in the day's time. So slowly built that up over the years. Now we've got 60 people, three hubs across three continents. Um, and I always, you know, uh, I always thought that my dad having a bunch of hobbies that he started and never finished was a bad thing. But then as I grew up, I realized, well, it's great to try everything. And, uh, I found a few things that stuck and being a pilot, um, and doing an astrophotography or two of those things. And I've got a bunch more, but, uh, yeah, I like to stay busy. Absolutely. Now, uh, my friend, you help business owners sort of streamline their business operations through uh, software. So I'm wondering if, if you can um, drill down for me on sort of the nitty gritty of your business operation and what 
space should stand out, my friend. Sure. So uh, we help software quality assure. We, we do the software quality assurance for custom software development companies and for SaaS companies. So a lot of times those companies just want to build cool stuff. Uh, they don't want to be you know, involved in figuring out which browsers they need to test, how to test those things, how to automate those tests, how to run performance tests, security tests. Uh, and that's where we come in. So we are either company's full uh, quality assurance team where we test all their software that they create and deploy, uh, or we augment their existing team uh, to kind of help them with some specialties that maybe they may not have in-house. So uh, we we basically come in and, and uh, kind of fully vet uh, software, web applications, and mobile applications uh, before you know they get to their customers so they don't explode in their customers' hands is one of my favorite things to say. Absolutely. Now, my friend, my friend, I also know that you're big on uh, time management and helping uh, companies uh, save time. And I know your family is currently be, being featured in a, a time management documentary. So tell me about uh how you uh manage your time effectively and why it's so important as a business owner we only have 24 hours in a day we all have the same uh 24 hours so uh if you can do more with that uh it gives you a little bit of an edge um i am certainly one who struggles with uh maximizing time management but i believe um you know spending quality time with your family first and foremost, uh, building yourself up as far as your career and your skill set goes, and then uh, kind of empowering and uh, sharing that with others um, is equally as important. So um, yeah, time management's huge for me. Uh, I, I certainly feel like I waste a bunch of time, but if you compare that to some other people, I think I do pretty well. Um, but that's part of what drives me, I think, is just that never-ending uh, quest to get as much out of each day as I can. Absolutely. You know, we all have to maximize the moment, right? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And Jay, tell me about your five for five, uh, sort of your uh, mandate in life, my friend, because, because I know it always helps uh, strive and structure uh, the life you want to live. And uh, it's helped some other people as well. So tell me about the mandate and what it's all about, my friend. Yeah, uh, you know, the 5 a.m. wake up is kind of a common um, way to help optimize your day, I would say. I hear it from a lot of different folks and read a lot of different books, um, but it all kind of started there. Uh, if you can start to wake up at 5 a.m., you're up before everybody else. Um, you know, especially me with five kids, I, I say I get up before the gremlins, the gremlins do. Um, so it gives me a little bit of a jump on the day. Uh, I can get my workout in, uh, which I strongly believe is tied to kind of mental health, just being strong physically and, and, you know, exercising daily, um, stretching my full body stretch, I think is also really huge. Mobility is huge, especially as you get older. Um, the meditation again, mental health and just kind of clarity. And like you said, keeping your feet, you know, being where your feet are is a big thing. Um, being mindful kind of every moment of the day if possible. And it, it's impossible, right? You can't always be mindful, but just working through it's It's called practice for a reason. You're always practicing meditation. You're practicing mindfulness. Um, and then journaling is the fifth out of the five. Uh, I think it's really important to not just keep your thoughts in your head and, um, you know, aside from going to a therapist every day, uh, I think, um, journaling is probably just as good just to get those things out of your head and, you know, onto paper or onto your phone or wherever you do it. Um, just, just to get some of those thoughts down and it feels, it kind of has that same release feeling, um, as if we, you know, I don't know if we've ever been to a therapist before, but just to kind of talk to somebody, uh, lay everything out there and then you don't have it just bouncing around your head all day. You've got it, you kind of got it out. So, um, that's my five for five every day. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, Jay, I, I'm fascinated fascinated to ask you about your journey as a pilot and a photographer, my friend. What's been the uh, most fascinating part of, of that portion of, of your life to date, my friend? I hate flying commercial. Uh, I had to fly to Toronto recently and I was terrified. Um, I love flying myself. Uh, I don't like roller coasters. I'm not a heights guy, but something about getting in, uh, a plane and having control and, um, 
it's something that was conquering my fears a little bit where, you know, is my biggest fear probably is of heights and, and flying. So, uh, you know, I'm not quite, I don't quite have my license yet. I've got around 70 hours logged. I'm still a student pilot, but I'm really, really close to getting my license. Um, but I think, you know, conquering my fears and uh, it's been one of the most exciting things I've ever done. I mean, flying solo by yourself is one of the most incredible uh, feelings and just, just um, free, you know, you feel like a right brother up there. It's an incredible feeling. Uh, astrophotography, my mom's a professional photographer. I never really was into photography, but um, I got a drone a while back and took some pictures of the sky. And I was like, this is pretty cool. And then I got a regular kind of camera and took some pictures. Like, this is kind of cool. And did some homework, looked on YouTube, found some videos, uh, took a little picture of Andromeda, which is like a little smudge on the, the screen uh, with my camera. And now I have, um, you know, 115 millimeter giant telescope and a fully computerized rig. Uh, I built a community of over a thousand astrophotographers from around the world. So uh, it was one of those hobbies that um, discovery, you know, just finding new things, figuring things out. I, I'm really big into hobbies that, um, you know, you kind of are always solving the next problem, you know, and that's what I feel like astrophotography is to the, you know, you're, you're, there's always something wrong, but there's always something right too. There's always something cool you figure out and you find out. Um, and there's a lot of community and, and other people doing the same thing. Um, so being able to build a community around that, and um you know discover at the same time i think was what led both of those passions of mine yeah absolutely and uh jay as a father of five kids i i'm i uh, know that you'll have an answer to the, this next question my friend so what do you think it means to level up and be present as a dad in today's world what do you think that means to you it's a great question um I hear a lot of podcasts or clips from podcasts of, of guys talking about how, um, you know, all that your kids want is your attention. And that's very true. I think it's, I'm in a unique situation a little bit because I've worked from home for probably the better part of seven or eight years now. So my, most of my kids don't really know a world where I'm not around constantly. Um, I have the unique opportunity to be around them and go to all their special moments and go to their hockey games and go to their birthday parties. And I, I'm not, not there very often. Um, and you know, I, I guess running your own business remotely and, uh, learning to delegate a lot of my day-to-day -day tasks has kind of freed me up for, to be flexible. Um, so I think, uh, you know, for those who don't have that luxury, um, you know, somebody said on a podcast the other day, uh, you know, the only thing in the world they don't want, you know, kids don't want fancy cars. They don't want fancy houses. They don't want, you know, all these different things. They just want the attention of, of two people, you and, and your, your significant other. And, uh, if you can give them that, that's the world to them. And it, it kind of struck me a little bit. And even though I am with my kids just about 24 hours a day, uh, you know, I, I think that's very important for everybody is to just, uh, realize that all your kids want is your attention and the rest is easy, you know, just being present with your kids and putting the phone down. Um, it's something I'm still guilty of all the time. Um, but, but trying to be present, listen to them, do things with them. Um, you know, somebody else said that, you know, they're not going to, nobody, your, your coworkers and your boss aren't going to remember, you know, you work on all those late nights, uh, five to 10 years from now, but your kids will, right. They'll remember the, that you weren't around and that you missed things because you were working. So, um, those kind of just little, little moments, uh, that I've, I've heard have stuck out to me and I have helped me kind of hone my, my vision of what I need to be as a dad. Yeah. Uh, well, I tell you, Jay, it's going to be the most imp important job you'll ever have, right? That's right. Absolutely. Absolutely. My friend. And I want to go back to the, uh, a software part of your life because I, I'm curious to ask you how you think how you think the evolution of so, software will sort of help change the way that we live our everyday life and make it a little bit easier. Uh, I think it just continues to augment uh, different areas of our life. Right? I mean, you see, Chat GPT is the big thing now. Um, I don't. I'm not. A, I'm not one of those people who are afraid of technology and, um, you know, are scared of AI and all these things that are coming. I think, I think it'll continue to improve life. Uh, I think, you know, there's, there needs to be self-governance around it, right? It was like social media. I mean, social media is a great thing in and of itself, but 
as a technology, we saw it kind of take over a generation. Like my older son, 18, you know, I, I feel like they, they grew up on social media and it was just always in their face. And it was always, so you have to balance the, the pros and the cons. Um, I think there'll be new things that, you know, make, make everyday life easier. You know, uh, augmented reality is a, a big one I think is coming where, you know, people wear glasses, even if you don't wear glasses, but, but kind of a heads up display on your glasses that can kind of show you different bits of information, I think would be kind of a big piece that's coming. Um, and just general artificial intelligence, augmenting the way that we do things, right? Answering questions for us, um, solving problems for us that kind of take some of the mundane repetitive tasks out of life. But, um, you know, I, I think it'll continue to improve uh, life as long as, you know, people don't let it become their identity and kind of uh, swallow their their day to day activities. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, Jay, I don't know how much uh, research you did on me prior to our conversation, buddy. But I was born with what's called a uh, spastic quadriplegic cerebral palsy. It simply means that I uh, don't have enough oxygen to walk normally, my friend. And I use uh, uh, the evolution of uh, technology as, such as Zoom and other uh, technological advance, technological advances to be included in the world. So how do you think uh, the evolving world of technology will better infuse folks like myself with disabilities into a societal life as a whole, my friend? Uh, yeah, I did. I did a little bit of homework, and uh, you know, I, I it's a inspiration uh, to see um, just the uh, spirit and kind of passion and overcoming everything. So, uh, you know, God bless you, man. Uh, I think you know, I'm I'm happy to be on and proud to be on uh, somebody's show who's kind of got that level of um, you know fortitude and just you know just consistent ability to kind of get past the next hurdle. So uh, just being here with you is an honor today. Uh, I would say, um, you know, again, going back to to the current wave of, of technology coming, you know, the AI stuff, I think having the ability to summarize information and give you more you know, ability to uh, get answers to questions quickly and to uh, maybe even kind of uh, summarize some of the information that you want to disseminate a little bit easier, right? So if there were some things you want to get out and you want to, want to kind of make those easier for people to understand uh, from your perspective, I think AI can help do that. So, uh, you know, as far as technological advancements for, you know, uh, biomedicine and all that stuff, that's not exactly my my lane. But as far as, uh, you know, user-facing technology, I think there'll be lots of things to continue to help augment your day-to-day um, and kind of get your message out, you know, with, with, you know, any challenges that you're facing. Yeah, absolutely. And one of the ways you give back to the world, and, uh, in addition to running your, your business, my friend, is you host a podcast called The First Customer, where I know that you interview uh, th- founders on how they got their first customer. So tell me about the podcast and what you're hoping to get out of it, my friend. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think anybody that runs a successful business, uh, gets asked a lot of times, um, you know, how, how they can do it too, right. How somebody else can do it. And I think the most relatable, uh, way to do that is to hear people in your situation, right? I mean, it's, it's, uh, a lot of people on my show weren't tech people. Some people worked in restaurants, some people worked in, uh, you know, uh, 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 there's a bunch of different uh, but real estate. There's a bunch of different backgrounds that people had, and um, finding those common threads of uh, how do I start a business? How do I get out of the nine to five kind of rat race? How do I take this idea I have or this experience that I have? That's my big thing. Is I'm a consulting evangelist. I think everybody should consult, um, and that's typically the first step to starting a business is is consulting with the experience that you've accumulated over the years um, or some great idea you have. And just to go do it, right? So it's an inspirational kind of podcast to some degree where you can hear from people who had an idea, uh, have experience, and just went for it. And, um, you know, the, the goal of the podcast is for, you know, budding entrepreneurs or even people who own their current business today um, to kind of 
to hear some things about how people identified their first customer and then how they went after them and, and kind of landed their first customer. And a lot of the times that's friends and family, right? And that's something that I, a common thread that I've pulled out of the podcast so far is just um, using the network that you have, uh, building a network and continuing to um, leverage the resources you have today instead of just saying, oh, I'll wait till you know something else happens or I'll wait till I meet somebody else or I'll wait till this event happens or I'll wait till whatever. It's always, if you're waiting, you know, you're just, you're just sitting on your hands. Um, nothing's going to happen. Nobody's going to start your business for you. So I started the podcast kind of with some noble goals. And so far it's, it's, it's been pretty well. I've gotten really lucky and got some great guests. Yeah, absolutely. It's a, a passion project. Anytime you uh, c- commit to hosting a podcast, isn't it? It sure, it sure is. It's uh, nobody tells you the work that's involved, but uh, it's, you know, it's fun. I love it. I, I really do love it. Yeah. Engaging in conversation is so much fun for sure. But Jay, I, I'm curious to also ask, ask you about, you know, refilling your, your cup of, you know, energy when uh, to make sure that things don't become redundant and, repetitive in life. So how do you reconnect with your inner center and make sure that your cup of energy is always filled? Uh, again, I, I think I'm in a unique position. I don't have, I have no dull moments. I grew up in Virginia, in the South, in the middle of nowhere, and I wasn't really allowed to be bored. Um, and I was always finding something to do. And I've always had a million hobbies. Um, I always like to learn new things. You know, you hear a lot of people say, but I really do. um, I'm constantly into something, you know, if it's not that it's my kids and it's not that it's the business and if it's not that, you know, so I think the biggest thing to kind of consistently keep my cup full is my five for five. Uh, Because if I'm doing that, that means I'm going to bed at a good time, which means I'm getting a full night of sleep. I'm getting up early before anybody else is up. I'm getting my workout in. I'm doing all the things I need to do to take the day on. And I tell you what, man, if I'm doing that for weeks and weeks at a time, uh, I'm energized every day. Um, so I think it's just taking care of yourself uh, in whatever way that means, right? I mean, if it's Maybe it's going for a walk. Maybe it's going for a bike ride. Maybe it's going to the movies. Maybe it's working out. Like Whatever it is for you, um, you know, I think you just got to consistently find time to do that because people push it off and then they get burnt out and angry and um, you know, we're all guilty of that, but um, just kind of finding, like you said, recentering um, on those things that you find uh, to be relaxing to you. Um, and, you know, uh, not every day is perfect. We all have things that we got to do, but, uh, you know, I think if you have those things in the back of your head, you know, you got to get to um, like working out or like I said, any physical activity is great. Um, those are kind of how I keep myself tuned up. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, uh, Jay, in your opinion, what's the best way to retain a customer in business? What do you, you think is a road roadmap that uh, business owners and entrepreneurs can follow to retain customers on a sustainable basis? Provide value. Communicate. 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 Um, be present when necessary. Uh, it's really important to show your face and, and, uh, I mean, look, it's the same thing as if you were a customer of somebody else, you have to, you just have to think, what would I want this company to provide me to keep me around? Right. It's good service. It's good service. It's communication. It's personalization. It's, um, you know, it's, it's all the things that, that you want if you go stay at a hotel, right? Like if you go buy a car, if you, buy a new service online. It's all the, the common things that anybody wants. Uh, you just have to provide consistent value and you have to communicate. I mean, there's nothing worse than, you know, you go, you're out of town and you're going to rent a car and you get there and they say, well, sorry, the car that you rented is already gone, right? I mean, that's poor communication. It's poor uh, customer service. It's all the things that it's just learning from those things in life um, that, you know, have proven to you to be something you would give that person your money. Just provide those same things to everybody else, and and you know, in the end, it'll all work out. Yeah, and I know for you, uh, Jay, before you ran your own business, you were uh, in, a, in a nine to five sort of consulting role, and then you uh, found freedom. So I'm w- wondering if you can go back to that point in your life and tell me what do you think was the most 
critical aha moment for you when you realize that you had your time freedom back? What's the value of uh, time freedom in your opinion? Uh, the moment was, um, it was a little more into freelance. I'd been doing freelancing for a bit. I mean, I ran, I had multiple jobs at the same time. I was getting them all done, but you know, in between breaks and after work and before work and everything, I was working, you know, doing consulting stuff on a bunch of different, uh, projects. So, uh, the biggest moment happened. I was still employed nine to five, but, uh, I had an offer come in and I realized that this was an opportunity to bring somebody else in to do the work instead of me. So uh, it was kind of the moment where I realized, wait a minute, I can charge a client 50 bucks an hour and I can pay somebody 20 bucks an hour and I can make $30 an hour for doing nothing. Right. I mean, that was the biggest moment. I don't know how and why it took me so long to realize that, but um, that was the moment where it all kind of clicked. And I said, Oh, I can do this and I can do it over and over again and I can expand that out and that's how I'll run this business. And that's what I've done for, you know, five, six, seven years at this point um, is continually kind of get that feeling of, um, you know, buying your time back, like you said. And then eventually I got virtual assistance, which was another level of buying my time back. I, I have three or four virtual assistants at this point that handle email and scheduling and phone calls and a bunch of different stuff for me. Um, because if you can free yourself up to go land the next client, then uh, the math is pretty simple. You can you can figure out how much it costs to pay somebody else to do what you were doing, and then you can figure out how much your uh, client would pay you as they're coming in, and you can kind of subtract the difference and figure out, wow, if I free up 10 hours a week, that's 40 hours a month. If I can't land one client in 40 hours a month, then I've got a bigger problems on my plate, right? So it was, it was initially kind of figuring out how to uh, run a business by hiring other people. And then it was another level of how do I outsource some of my day-to-day -day stuff um, to buy some of my time back? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, Jay, I want to go back to this for a second about uh, the documentary that you're uh, being featured in. What can uh, people expect from it? And tell me about the process of of filming it and what you've learned most about your family throughout this process? It's a great question. Uh, I don't I don't have a ton of information about it. Uh, it's a little, um, a little tight lipped at the moment, but it's been, uh, an incredible experience. Um, mainly for my kids and, you know, for my wife, I, I love the fact that they get to tell people that they're being filmed as part of a documentary. Uh, it all seemingly was kind of random. You know, they found some business owners in Philadelphia, uh, and I was one of them. And I really hit it off with the producer and the uh, the director, and we've it's been great. Um, I think something we've learned as part of it is just that uh, you know you um, your normal day to day life is wild and crazy, and you don't realize it until you try to kind of compartmentalize that stuff and film it, um, and you know, it's important to kind of appreciate and embrace the craziness sometimes, but also sometimes it's maybe good to step back and say, okay, like, what are we doing here? But let's, let's schedule things a little bit better. Let's plan a little bit better. Let's start to do things better in our lives. So, um, it's been an opportunity for us to get a little more organized as a family and just kind of start to put things on the calendar and kind of, uh, just, you know, we've, I think we filmed us five or six times at this point And, um, each time I say we get a little better and it's supposed to be natural and it's supposed to be, you know, us living in our normal environment, but we certainly learn, uh, we've learned how to be a bit better with our time, uh, as we're being documented about spending our time. Yeah, absolutely. Well, uh, Jay, tell me in your view, cause you know, for me, uh, a living life is my favorite thing to do because I, I believe if you live an authentic life, my friends, you have a, better opportunity to contribute to the conversation of progress because, you know, no matter how old you are or how many, how many degrees you have, you can always learn uh, something from someone else. So what's that mean to you to sort of maximize potential in life? And what's your why in life? What gets you excited to get out of bed in the morning, my friend? 
Another great question. Um, I mean, the easy answer is my kids and my family. Uh, I think it's easy to get stuck in the loop of just thinking it's another day, but there is, I always tell my wife, there's, there's five or 10 minutes every day. Each one of our kids does something that lets me keep them for the next day. Right. So, uh, you know, uh, enjoying those moments, uh, with your kids, like the real kind of connection moments there, uh, connecting with other people. I think I was an introvert before I met my wife. Um, but I've really come to appreciate social interaction with other human beings and how important that is. And, and, um, you know, I I don't have the answer for, you know, what my legacy is going to be or, you know, what did I spend my time best on in in life? Um, but I think trying to find that out has been fun. Um, and that's been a big purpose in my life, um, in the last, you know, couple of years is just how do I best spend my time? Uh, how do I, you know, cause a lot of people think you have a successful company and maybe you make an exit or maybe you just have a successful company and you've got, you know, you're financially stable. Um, and you're just going to go kick your feet up and sit on a beach for the rest of your life. Right. Like people who are successful don't want to do that. Right. Like, of course I love going to the beach and I love relaxing and whatever, but it's about what's next. Right. It's, it's what, what, what business am I going to start next? What project am I going to do next? How can I give back and help? I mentor, you know, some people in the Philly chamber of commerce and I do, you know, uh, like I love to fly and I love to do those different things. Like what's next and exciting that I can kind of discover, uh, in my life that I enjoy to do. So I think, um, making my incremental progress on my physical and mental health is, is what gets me up every day. Uh, spending time with my kids and family and um, just the trying to keep that spark of um, discovery and, you know, what's next um, have been huge for me to kind of keep myself happy and, and, and push me forward. Yeah. And yeah, I'm fascinated to also ask you about your philosophy or, or process when it comes to, to setting goals and whether you think there's a correlation between staying committed to something and achieving a progress. So what's your philosophy on uh, setting goals and what would be your message to any entrepreneur about the the importance of consistency when you want to set goals? Yeah, I would say the Goal setting in general is overrated. I think you should have goals. I don't think you should obsess over them. I mean, there's some that you should really drive towards, but um, being flexible with with your goals, I think, is important. I mean, there's I think there's just this notion that you can write something down, you know, write a list of ten things on a piece of paper, and like that's what you're going to march to every day of your life until they're all complete. Like that's what people think goals are. Goals to me are uh, things that drive you forward, and then you pivot. You find something that's more exciting or better or, you know, can serve you better. So I think, you know, having long-term goals is certainly important. I mean, I'm, you know, working on it every day. Um, but, you know, just my philosophy is that, um, you know, the more you enjoy the journey, um, the better life is. And it's not all about the destination. It's such a played out cliche, but it's so true. You know, it's, it's, if you're doing all this stuff and you're just driving down the road until you get to this never ending milestone 20 years from now and you waste all this time in between, like, what are you doing? What are we all doing? Like, you got to enjoy what you're doing to get there and figuring, figuring out what it is that you do enjoy and spend more time doing it. Um, life's short, life's really, really short. And, uh, so yeah, I would just say people obsess over goals. Um, I loosely follow some, some general goal guidelines, but, um, you know, for the most part, it's it's what feels right, what do I enjoy doing, and uh, what moves, moves me and my family forward. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, Jay, tell me, my final question for you, buddy, has to do with when you think about your heartbeat of hope for the future in terms of making progress, both uh, society, uh, societally and uh, personally, what brings you the most uh, uh, hope for the future of making a progress to becoming a more a unified union? Another great question. Um, heartbeat of hope is a great phrase. Um, maybe the cheap answer is just seeing kind of the 
you know, my kids and other, you know, my, my nieces and nephews and other kids, my, my friends, you know, kids and everything. Um, just seeing the fact that they want to be good people, you know, the kids aren't, aren't born mean and nasty. Like people want to be good. And I think just, um, you know, we've made a lot of progress as a society and, and uh, a union. And I certainly feel like we've lost a lot of that progress in the last, <laughs> you know, however many years, uh, and especially recently for, for rights for people and all sorts of stuff. But, uh, you know, I think there's an innate sense, especially for the younger generations, to continue to be good people um, and to push forward. And I just, you know, I have hope that, um, you know, the the parents of this generation that are raising this next batch up uh, kind of respect everybody for who they are. And, um, you know, my biggest motto in life is just be nice, you know, be kind. Um, and I hope that, that, you know, other parents and other people out there can kind of just push that message forward with their kids and, and, you know, don't stop being so serious all the time. Life's fun. Uh, and, and people should enjoy it. And, and, you know, just don't, don't trample anybody else's dreams or their hopes or their rights or anything like that. And, uh, just keep pushing things forward in the right direction. So that's that's kind of my my hope for going forward. Absolutely. And my friend, tell me uh, finally if people want to get connected with uh, your uh, software testing company or yourself personally, what's the best way they can do that? Yes, sir. Uh, JDAQA.com is our software testing firm. Uh, connect with me on LinkedIn, J Agner, A I G N E R. Um, and check out my podcast, firstcustomerpodcast.com. And uh, it was awesome being on, Kevin. I really appreciate it, brother. Well, I, I certainly appreciate the work that you, you, you've you done to uh, diversify the software and a small business community, my friend. Your work in the space and time on my behalf is uh, most appreciated. And I want to thank you for being here, my friend. Kevin, I appreciate it, brother. You're uh, You're awesome. Thank you.